Hello, my dolls. I am so sorry for the confusion earlier. There was a bit of a glitch in getting the stream started. And I don't know if you can hear, we're in the middle of a thunderstorm where I am. <laughs> so I have my ring light ready. And if I happen to lose you during the stream, that means I lost power. So I'm gonna cross my fingers that that doesn't happen. Please cross your fingers with me that that does not happen. And please let me know in the chat if you can hear me loud and clear. And we're gonna be working with Chelly today on vibrato. That's right, it's the end of vibrato boot camp. It doesn't have to be the end. The videos are gonna be up indefinitely. But this is the end of the schedule that I had printed out, and we are going to do a stream on the blato. So I really hope you dolls are able to join. Um, like I said, there was a technical issue with the stream before we started, and not sure why. I could not get my camera to turn on, but we are here. And I'm gonna check and see if Chelly is nice and in tune. Let's see. because unfortunately, this isn't the same link I've been publicizing because of this issue with the stream starting and the thunderstorm starting, and we're just improvising, and we're all here together to work on vibrato. So, my dolls, what is the first question? This is for you all to... Talk about vibrato with me, have Chelly and I demonstrate some things. And for those of you who have been doing the boot camp, my vibrato boot camp, this is the last week. If you have any questions about a video, an exercise, something I talk about in the video, this is the chance to interact with Chelly and I live. So, do we have questions on vibrato, tips for practicing, tips from the boot camp? And I kind of feel like improvising until I get a vibrato related question. <laughs> questions about vibrato. If not, I will also be giving you guys some tips, some friendly reminders, just in case some of you dolls couldn't be here for the live and you want to come back and watch this later. 
So I'm just going to talk a little bit more about vibrato until I get a direct question from you all in the audience. So some things to keep in mind with vibrato, and I talk about this a lot in my boot camp, is tension, not having unresolved tension or not being aware of the tension. Sometimes tension happens. But if you're not aware of it, you can't address it, and therefore it can manifest and become a bigger problem. So common sources of tension is the thumb, the thumb, when you're doing vibrato. So that's why we do a lot of sliding exercises to encourage a thumb that is loose and relaxed. I'm not saying your thumb needs to slide all the time. No, 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 no. But with this exercise of sliding, that means the thumb is relaxed and ready to go. Because if we're tight and squeezing, we can't slide. So doing, I believe this is week two of the boot camp, we do um, mm -hmm. we do a shorter siren. Before in week one, we did a lot of this. Yeah, the whole fingerboard or most of the fingerboard. Mm -hmm. And then in later weeks, we do a smaller slide. So having this little slide really helps the thumb to not have tension. And then when you do stationary vibrato, really focus on the thumb. Am I squeezing? You can try, take the thumb off, put it back, off, back, off, back, off, back. So I'm doing these little mini taps underneath. That's kind of a second trick. So we have a question from Sean. Thank you so much, Sean, for your question. It's very hard to get a vibrato on the A string with my fourth finger. The other strings aren't as hard. Is that normal? Very good question. And before I address it, I want to apologize too for the, I really hope you guys can see me clearly because the thunderstorm and all these things, I really had to change my setup last minute. So not quite what I was planning, but we're going to go with it. Musicians got to improvise right in music and in life. So, um, so the fourth finger, Sean, a great tip I want to give you is make sure three is also assisting. Um, I talk about in the boot camp, we vibrate in pairs. So, so to start, to start. I don't think about it so much anymore because um, I, I have control over playing for so many years. But with the fourth finger, I always have three. That's one of the pairings that has stuck with me because the fourth finger is weak. It's our smallest finger. The pinky needs the support. So my first question for you, Sean, would be... is also helping and is on the string and they're vibrating together like a unit. So that's my first tip. You mentioned the A string is harder than the other strings. So let me see. One thing that comes to mind when you're changing strings is the angle of your arm, the angle of your arm. So when we're down low, when we change strings, we don't want to constantly adjust our setup. That would be madness and it wouldn't feel very nice. So we raise the elbow as we go down and lower it as we come up. So watch my elbow over here, little tiny. It's nothing crazy, but you can see the difference. So 
For the A string, Sean, I would recommend adjusting your elbow height. So maybe you need to be a little lower and a little bit back. So notice this does not involve my shoulder. I'm not doing this. This is your elbow. It's this hinge right here, swings. Well, your elbow hinge, sorry. Your elbow is what swings. And this also pivots where your, where your arm meets your shoulder, this also pivots. So you can come back a little bit or forward a little bit. So I would recommend the horizontal plane of your elbow. Because if I'm too forward, um, actually what I'm gonna do, and I want you to listen for the difference, is I'm gonna try to vibrate. So I'm gonna replicate what Sean is asking. I'm gonna vibrate on the A string with three and four, and I'm gonna change my arm and elbow angle because Sean, I, I'm predicting that it has something to do with the angle of your arm and your elbow. So. Now I'm exaggerating it, but I think you might need to open up, open up a little bit more for that A string. That's an excellent question, Sean. So I hope that makes sense. Please type in the chat um, if you need me to clarify anything about that. So before Sean's excellent question, I was talking a bit about the... Uh, the thumb, some ways to prevent tension in the thumb when we try to do vibrato. So I recommended doing some light thumb taps under the fingerboard. Now that is a later step. That's kind of a post boot camp step. So if you haven't checked out the boot camp, I really highly recommend it because I really sat down and I really thought about you know, what is a great foundation for someone who has barely or not tried vibrato or is having a really hard time with vibrato? Like what is crucial that you need? So I really thought about this. And if you go through the boot camp and your thumb still is kind of giving you trouble, you feel like you're squeezing, you can do some little taps. Um, so you can't see it at this angle, but I'm doing tap, 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 tap. Little tiny taps underneath. I'm not, I'm not going around and going crazy. Just little taps under the, the neck. Guys, hear that thunder? You're getting some ambiance this evening. For those of you just joining us, it is thundering up a storm. It went from kind of overcast to like downpour raining in a matter of moments. So I might lose power. And if I do, I will make it up to you guys and do a second stream. So that um, if we get cut off early, I promise I'll make it up to you. I promise. Okay, so you can do some slides. So this is when... <laughs> vibrating in one spot and if you still feel something squeezing I would recommend doing some slides underneath and that's because if your thumb is moving it, it can't be squeezing if the thumb is moving it can't be squeezing so that's a good tip um, and please contribute questions in the chat. This is a chance for you guys to get advice from Chelly and I and to see us demonstrate things. Very awesome opportunity. And I really want to help you guys out. So another thing talked about in the boot camp. Let's see, we talked about the thumb. 
I did mention the finger pairs, and that is great because when you are first starting out vibrato, your hand, the balance is getting thrown off all the time, right? If we're shaking from the arm, remember, if we're shaking from the arm, then, you know, we're, we're not used to doing these various motions and the center of our hand is turning and twisting and what's going on. So if you vibrate in pairs to start, that is a really good foundation, a good way to feel grounded, a good way to have additional support. Hello in the chat. Hello, hello. Please offer your vibrato questions and I will do my best to answer. We're talking about finger pairs right now. So over time, when you feel more secure, it is okay to let the secondary finger off a little bit. So let's say I'm going to do third finger. So I might, if I was first learning vibrato, I would start with two and three. And then as I get more comfortable, and now that I've been playing so long, the third finger is the primary weight, and the second one is kind of grazing and floating lightly. But I still have it nearby. I don't, this isn't good. This isn't good. This isn't good. First finger, well, there's nothing behind it. So, of course, first finger is on its own. But I really think having the, the vibrating and finger pairs is really beneficial. So that's another reminder. And we talked about the tension in the thumb. And let's see. Tension in the thumb is not good. And then we talked about the finger pairs. And please offer any questions about the exercises in the boot camp. If anything isn't clear or something felt weird in your practicing, you all ever felt weird practicing vibrato? Um, ask why, you know, and tell me about it. Type in the chat and tell Chelly and I about it. And we would be so glad and so happy to help um, kind of diagnose what's going on on your end. So, oh, you guys just see that? I just had some major lightning. There it is. Oh boy. I'm getting nervous. I don't want to lose this stream with you guys. Um, so another thing I want to note is the boot camp focuses mostly in first position because that's where a lot of beginner cellists start is first position. And I will say the rules apply when you develop into shifting into new positions. All of the rules apply um, that I outline in the boot camp. And another thing though, when we get to fourth position, this is fourth position up here, your thumb and one are at the base of the neck. You do have to lift up your elbow in, in all cello playing. You do have to support to get over the shoulder, we have to support, but especially in vibrato, it is so important. Um, because having this nice, even level plane helps with the vibrating and the shaking. If we have a kink, I call it a kink in the line. Like if it's uh, bent down here, bent up here. If it's not even, the flow from the arm to the wrist, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Or it's going to be really difficult and uncomfortable. So as we approach the shoulder, we need to lift the elbow. So it's not an obstacle. It's not a problem. So we lift the elbow. Uh, a great example where this is so important, um, for those of you who have studied the swan, or will eventually be studying the swan. You're constantly shifting 
And this is a really difficult piece for vibrato because you have to keep it constant and going. If I play... <laughs> If I'm, if I'm having to adjust over here, you guys see, I, 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 it's hard. It's hard to not play it. It's hard to play incorrectly, but if I'm low, then high, then uh, I'm kind of tired. Oh, let's lift up. It, it's just, it's not going to be consistent. The sound, the tone, the vibrato, nothing will be consistent. So we need to find a comfortable elbow height where we can access everything comfortably. constant elbow height. Um, so this is talking about vibrato. The boot camp is in first position, but once we start shifting, what are some things to think about? So that's just a little extra note. And for those of you who might not have checked out the vibrato boot camp, go to any of my videos. There's a link in the description. I made a very pretty calendar. I have to say, I was kind of happy with that calendar. I thought it came out very pretty. And it tells you what videos, what days, and it's a four week program completely free. And tonight is the live stream for that. So any questions about the boot camp? All right. So I want to kind of go back to Sean's point until a new question pops up. The fourth finger. So out of the fingers, everyone is a little different. Two and three and one are pretty easy. Um, they are stronger. They usually, I shouldn't say stronger. They're longer. They have more pad. They're bigger fingers. And the pinky is really tricky for vibrato. So if you are practicing and you're saying, Fourth finger. Today I'm going to get it. I am going to nail fourth finger vibrato. And you just. And you're practicing. And you're practicing. And you're practicing. Your fourth finger is going to be sore. It's going to be super sore. So please don't just dedicate a, an entire day to one finger. That's kind of like going to the gym and only spending an entire day, hour, hour and a half on your right bicep. You wouldn't do that. Your arm, oh my gosh, you won't be able to lift it the next day if you did nothing but work that bicep. Same thing applies to the fingers with vibrato. You really want to be even in how you work your fingers. You can do that by practicing your repertoire, the exercises in the boot camp, you know, the fourth finger will feel weak. It's small. It will catch up. I promise it will catch up. But because it's so small, you can't overwork it. So that's really important. And when you guys feel comfortable incorporating vibrato, First great place to start is your scales. So I would take a scale like G major. Hold on to that A until you feel comfortable and you like the tone, then B. Oh, do I have my finger pairs? Yes, I do. I have my finger pairs. Here comes the fourth. Nice and light. How's my thumb? Is my thumb squeezing? No, it's okay. All right. Open string. Let's do some rotations. Now, first finger. You see what I'm doing? And don't be afraid to talk aloud to yourself in your practice room. 
you know, no one's around. It's just you and your instrument. You can verbally prompt yourself. Why not? Why not? Um, so that's kind of a first step. I would incorporate your vibrato into your scales. And then after your scales, I mentioned this in the boot camp, whatever pieces you're playing, anything longer than a quarter note, half notes, two beats, dotted half notes, three beats, whole notes, four beats. So whatever is longer than a quarter note, you should try to use some vibrato. And then if you're playing a piece that is slow, let's say you're doing, I'm going to pick a random one, um, French folk song from Suzuki book one. If you're going slowly, you could um, add vibrato to those quarter notes. Sean, we have another question from you. Thank you so much. My finger always migrates to the very tip. That's good. Um, that's a good question. It's not good that you migrate to the tip. And Sean, I'm sorry that it appears to be frozen for you. This might be because of I'm currently having a thunderstorm in my area. I'm not getting notice of a frozen stream, but if that's the case, I'm really sorry. Um, for the Question regarding the tip of the finger. You should vibrate in the fleshy part. We call it, sometimes we call it the pad, the pad of the finger. So uh, let me let me come up to the camera. So if I'm doing vibrato, oh, I want to get, uh, I want to get a little pointer like a pencil. Hold on. I have all my bags of tricks. Okay, so it's it's a pen, but it will work. So if I'm doing vibrato, this part. So not on the tippy tip, but not near the knuckle. I would say in the upper third to the middle. So if I'm looking between my top knuckle and the pointer of my finger, somewhere in, in here. So halfway, not too low, but not too high, kind of in the middle to upper third. That is where the string touches my finger when I use vibrato. In general, most cello playing. So if you find yourself migrating to the tip of the finger, could be a couple things. If your elbow is too close in, if your elbow and your wrist is too close, the fingers will curve automatically. So you can open. So all I'm doing is I'm moving from here in, out, in, out. And you can see right here when I do that, my fingers are allowed to open, open this way. I don't want to say the word flat because we don't want to, we don't want flat, flat noodly fingers, but we also don't want super, super hyper curled. Okay. So that's one thing. And let me see. The other thing too, if your elbow is too low, the fingers are going to collapse and curl like this. So I would recommend, and this also helps with your original question, Sean, having a higher elbow and opening this way. So what I would say, pick a note. And the other thing too, if you are working on slow, um, easy vibrato, which you should work on slow first, you can swing a little bit like this, a little bit back. 
So I'm not completely perpendicular. I'm a little bit open. So um, Sean, if you are too um, perpendicular to the neck, it might be hard to get in, in touch with the pad of your finger. So instead of this, if you open, so we're talking a lot about being open with vibrato. So higher elbow, a little bit, um, not too closed in, but out, out like this, out this way. And then leaning back, leaning back. So you could try, again, this floating elbow idea. Okay, so if we can float like this, eh, 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 then you can see what's comfortable and what allows you to access the pad of your finger. That really helped me. When someone talked to me about that, it like blew my mind because you're always told to play on the tip of your fingers because beginners sometimes do this, but then we do this because we're overcompensating. And the pad, when I started leaning my elbow and wrist back a little bit. So not like this, not a complete square, but a little bit back. That helps. I tell students it's like drinking a cup, drinking a glass. So you can think about it from the terms of your wrist. It's like you're drinking, drinking a cup, uh, drinking out of a cup. It's that hinge. And it allows your fingers to lean back a little bit. That's a very good question, Sean. You have excellent questions tonight. Thank you so, so much for contributing them. So we've talked about playing on the pad, what happens when you shift, thunder and lightning ambiance. We have everything. We have everything here on the Cello Doll YouTube channel. It's a constant surprise. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So let's see. I welcome more questions um, until I get some new ones. I'm just going to go through the main points of the boot camp as kind of friendly reminders what to take with you after the boot camp, what to take with you. So, one thing too that we have talked about in some of my other videos, but on the boot camp, doing vibrato. Yes, I made a funny, I really try. Um, the A and D strings, little easier for some people. There's exceptions everywhere. But when you want to vibrate on the G and C strings, thicker strings, they're further this way. They're on the, from my perspective, it's the right, the right side of the fingerboard. So what do we do? We do briefly... I believe in week three, we play on the G and C strings, but what should we keep in mind? Um, how are they different, right? I mean, there's only so much I can pack into videos, you know? Um, playing on a thicker string, you still need more weight. You need more weight, not more pressing. I hate the word press. Do not use the word press. That's one of my outlawed words in my studio. You can't say the word press. It's weight. Your weight sinks into the instrument. You don't, you don't press. That's tension, that's not good. Pressing is not allowed. So we sink, 
And yes, we need the higher elbow to come around, right? Like this. So the elbow is a little higher, but we the weight comes from above, like you're hanging. I don't know if you guys ever, mm, I'm trying to think of a safe way you can do this and we don't. Um, one thing you guys can try to do, uh, take your right hand, hold on to the, hold on, don't, don't squeeze, but hold on to the neck, bring the cello a little bit up. It's still in my legs. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything crazy. It's still between my legs. And then, um, think about sinking like it's a monkey bar. You sink, put the cello back, you still sink. So cello's a little bit up, we sink. Cello's back down, we sink. Just to give you a little bit of a, a height perspective, I wish I had done this growing up. Because it's hard to imagine hanging off of something that's at level with your body. So I just, I hold on, I lift up a little bit and I sink in. And that's really important for vibrato on the thicker strings. I'm gonna stop because we got some wonderful questions. So this is so helpful. This is from um, Used to Shoot Film. Thank you for your comments. I had so much tension, I ended up having wrist surgery. I am so sorry for, um, I've never heard of this and I'm not gonna pronounce it correctly, just warning. Der, der cure veins, der cure veins? I don't know, but it doesn't sound like fun. And I'm so sorry you had to go through that surgery is very difficult on the hands. I think your response to Sean's question will be helpful. I think arm angle may be part of my problem. Um, used to shoot film. I would be interested to know which, which wrist, what addiction exercise, which wrist, which wrist um, had to have the surgery. I'm guessing it's the left wrist um, because that tends to be where most tension is. Also in the bow hand, our thumb, tension in the thumbs. So what I would advise to you is the number one place for tension is the thumb. Because if your arm doesn't feel supported, your thumb will squeeze to compensate. That's my theory. I'm not a you know, I didn't, I haven't studied human anatomy. This is just from strictly a cello playing perspective. I'm not a doctor. I'm not, um, I'm not a specialist, but these are from experiences of my own. I had horrible tension in my thumbs. Oh my God. I had such awful tension in my thumbs. And I think that's why that was the case, but I was very lucky in that I was able to um, adjust before it became a huge problem. So, um, used to shoot film. I would recommend, yes, this idea of, um, you weren't, I don't know if you were here in the beginning, but we talked about if you're trying to do vibrato, you can tap, um, oop, there's my mic. You can tap little baby taps during a long note. So if I'm playing um, tap, 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 I'm narrating my taps, tap, 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 tap. Because if your thumb is squeezing, you won't be able to tap. Um, and used to shoot film. In my vibrato boot camp, I do a lot of this. Some mini slides and they shrink and they do all of this. So, um, like this, like this, like this. Um, so that shaking of the thumb, that sliding, there's multiple purposes for that sliding. Um, but it is to help free up the thumb and free up the arm. That's the first thing I talk about is freeing up your arm. Vibrato comes throughout the arm arm and that's going to help you um with playing tension with vibrato with everything 
it has to all come from the arm. Now, I'm not saying go crazy. No, no, it doesn't have to be active um, visually, but it has to be engaged in some form. So um, that's a reason we do this sliding is for the whole arm. So let's see. Oh, you replied. Thank you. Left tendons from arm to thumb getting hung up in the tunnel that thread through near the wrist and the tunnel has to be opened up. Oh my gosh. Um, I was gripping so hard. I had a theory. It was the, the thumb. Um, yeah, my dolls, if you feel pain in the wrist, if you feel pain here, so this is, um, on top of my arm around my elbow, this muscle right here, this guy, if you feel pulling here, if you feel pulling here under your arm, those are the three common places for playing tension, not good reactions. If you feel like tightness or pulling or soreness here, here, so this area to here, up here, you need to take a break. Not good. That means you're working way too hard. That's kind of like your body giving you a warning sign before an injury. So really listen to that. Um, we have a question from young A. Clement. Quarter note, how many vibratos do I do for it? Well, that's a very good question. So what they are asking is any, any know how many wiggles? Oh, now I got a notification about my connection. I think we're okay. I had a feeling we were done for with the thunderstorm. Um, so what I was saying is if we have a rhythm, how many wiggles? It depends on your tempo. So if you're playing something slow, oh, I love this piece. I'm for, uh, Elegy, Elegy, Elegy by Foray. Um, Okay, I really hope we are back. I'm sorry, my dolls, it's this thunderstorm. You know what, I already have an idea in the back of my head. I'm gonna make it up to you because I'm kind of disappointed with how this stream is. It's all, I know I can't prevent a thunderstorm. I can't, I can do my best. I'm hardwired ethernet but I'm still getting um, internet signal warnings. Um, don't worry, I'll have a surprise. I have an idea, I'll make it up to you. I just feel really bad about it. Um, I'm disappointed, but I'll keep going because um, I really wanna answer your question, um, young A, Clement. Um, it depends on your tempo and your rhythms. If the tempo is slow, you can fit in more wiggles. If the tempo is fast, you might not have time to vibrato at all. So I'm working right now, I'm revisiting the Haydn C major concerto. Um, so right there. I can only do like two wiggles on the others. Um, but if I'm playing something slow. If I'm playing something slow like that, then um, I can fit in more of those vibrato wiggles. This also brings up a great, great question about character in your vibrato. If you are playing something slow, somber, sad, you're going to want a slower vibrato usually, right? It wouldn't make sense. Um, it sounds 
sounds like uh, 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 it sounds like um, electricity. But if it's something like really heavy in your heart, you want a slow, wide vibrato. <laughs> is an extension of your question. It, it does also depend on the character and the mood. If you're playing something exciting like the Haydn, I had faster, narrower vibrato. But for a first step, I often get ahead of myself. First step is your tempo. So if you're playing something slow and easy, let me see. Um, can do something that is more relaxed and you can get more wiggles in. I, I don't think you should count. Now what I'm at the end of the boot camp, we do count our wiggles. This is, I'm talking about stage two when you're getting more comfortable with it. It's more about the feeling and having it be a relaxed and consistent feeling a consistent oscillation, a consistent wiggling rather than counting. However, I hope I'm remembering this right. I think I heard a story that Hilary Hahn, she said in a master class that she counts her vibrato wiggles. That's insane. Because sometimes um, they happen so fast, I find them hard to count. So I think that's amazing that she can do that. She's also Hilary Hahn. So she's incredible. Um, but um, I would say once you get past four or five wiggles, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, 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 six. I mean, at that point, it's basically vibrato. Um, so in the boot camp, we do one wiggle, we do two wiggles. Then you could do try three to four. I'd be interested to see how it goes if you try three to four wiggles, um, young A. Clement. So um, one, um, and do this in your scales. I talked about this earlier, scales. Um, uh, um, I don't wanna start on an open string. Let's do D. One. wiggles per note go a little bit faster think think of a faster motion and just keep that motion going don't focus on one two three four five because the vibrato it's a constant rebounding a constant wiggling um trying to think of an example it's like a spring you know what i mean um like a coil like a coil spring and if you were to compress it or you were to flick it and it wiggles, twang, it doesn't go but, 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 but. It's a constant. <laughs> really, um, <clears throat> really uh, eloquent and sophisticated terminology here on the Cello Doll YouTube channel. Wow, the wiggles of the spring coil. No, but seriously, that's kind of what vibrato is like. It's more of a constant motion. And the steps in the boot camp and the idea of counting oscillations is all preparatory. It's all preparing you for this. So I really hope that answers your question. I know I just talked. I talk a lot. Guys, you don't even know. I edit these videos um, when I post a vlog I have to edit it down so much because I talk and I talk and I talk. Um, 
So that's my burden when I'm editing, but you guys hear it when I'm here live. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, some feedback on rhythm. So to summarize, I would try maybe four wiggles per quarter note. Start with your scales, do some wiggles in your scale quarter notes, and then try, once you go beyond four, you're essentially doing a slow vibrato. And I would encourage you to just feel that, keep that feeling. Another exercise, you could do four, four plus, four wiggles, four plus. So I would go one, two, three, four. constant kind of feeling that you get in touch with the feeling of vibrato and then you speed it up a little bit. Um, two, three, four. Um, keeping this constant feeling of the shaking in the arm, the shaking, the shaking. The reason I keep saying that is often if a student loses the vibrato for a second, like they get it and then they kind of lose it, they get discouraged and they just, ugh, they, they tense up and they just, oh, I'll just go faster. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, 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 no. That's not good. Um, if you find you lose the vibrato, if you, um, if you lose it, shake out your wrist, shake it, shake it, shake it, and then try again with the, stop 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 if you lose it because you need to be very aware rather than squeeze 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 and just trying to muscle through it recognize that the vibrato has kind of fallen off a little bit the vibrato's fallen off and then you stop and you think about what happened so you try to diagnose. We are detectives in our practice rooms in addition to cellists. So stop, relax. All right, we're doing good. Oh, wait, I'm squeezing. I'm, oh, wait, am I squeezing? I am. Oh, no. Okay, relax the thumb. Slow oscillations. what happened well is your arm moving let's see ah, i had to unlock my arm i was a little tight so this is all like make believe but these are the kinds of things you know if you make a mistake i think often in practicing culture we do a mistake or something happens and we go oh bad bad run away go, uh, no bad but we don't ask why why did this happen? And if you start thinking of it as a chance to explore and ask questions, why did this happen? Um, was I squeezing? Well, let's try again and I'll focus on my thumb. So that's what practicing is for, guys. Like, don't be afraid. Don't tense up and like, 
I just, uh, I'll make up for it. No, no, no. Um, bakes in a different way, especially when you're working on vibrato. My connection is unstable. Of course it is. Um, oh, thank you, young A. Clement. Um, thank you so much for taking time to explain. I'm going to practice now. Yay! Go practice. Have fun. Have a great time. You're most welcome. Um, yeah, so we've come to about the end of the stream. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am so sorry about the internet connection and confusion. There was a thunderstorm. Well, no, there was a thunderstorm. Then my camera wouldn't turn on. My camera wouldn't turn on. And that was very annoying. And so I had to restart. And then there was a thunderstorm and the internet connection wasn't fabulous. So I have a surprise. I just made up in my head. I'm going to make it up to you guys. I think I'll do another video on vibrato. Um, talking about some of these questions um, we had here tonight because they were beautiful questions. So you guys are probably going to get an extra bonus um, video and it's not really a surprise because I just blabbed about it, but I just feel really bad. Um, um, oh, Danny, thank you. My teacher said she's going to start me on vibrato in a few weeks. I'm nervous. Danny, don't be nervous. What is there to be nervous about? You know, don't be nervous. I mean, I'm sure you're excited about vibrato and you want to do well and you want to add this to your cello playing toolbox. But if you're nervous and you're worried about making mistakes, you will be tense. So I really don't want you to be tense. I don't want you to worry. Vibrato is an incredible tool. And, you know, every new concept you will... Yes, bye, young A. Clement, bye-bye. Um, every new skill, you will make mistakes. It's inevitable. It's brand new. It's brand new. We need to be kinder. We need to be determined and want to work hard, but we also have to be kind, myself included. We have to remember to be kind to ourselves. Um, so don't be nervous. You know, it's a brand new experience. There's a lot of stuff to process physically, physically in the body when we do vibrato. And, oh, you're most welcome. I love the thank yous. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So don't be nervous. Um, it's exciting. And please, Danny, ask all the questions you have. Your teacher being there with you in person is an excellent resource. So if something isn't clicking right, ask your teacher and be very proactive, you know? Don't be afraid. They're there to help you. And be excited. You know, vibrato is a beautiful way to add personality into your music and colors and different things. So I'm so excited you're going to be starting vibrato. And just really think about um, ways to avoid tension or to, you know, approach it relaxed and accepting. And you'll be more, less likely to be tense in your body. You're most welcome, everyone. Thank you so much. You dolls are incredible. Happy practicing. Check out the boot camp if you haven't already. And like I said, you guys are probably going to get a bonus episode because I had high expectations for this stream and I feel kind of bad about it. Um, so you guys will probably get some bonus content. And quick plug. I'm just wiping down Shelly. Last announcement before we sign off for this evening. There is episode five of Abrada Bootcamp. So there is a fifth episode that exists, but it is only going to be released for my Patreon donors. So if you're on Patreon already, you know about um, what Patreon is. But if you don't, I release bonus monthly content. Do you guys know that? I make more content that some of you don't know about um, if you're not on Patreon with me and Shelly and the doll community. So I give out monthly rewards and perks, photos, MP3s, bonus videos, early releases on my music videos. There's a lot of stuff on the Cello Doll Patreon. And no matter what level you donate, no matter the level, you get the bonus videos. And this month, is 
the vibrato boot camp episode five. So there is a secret episode already out there. Um, it's coming out Saturday on the pay on the cello doll Patreon. So just for you dolls to consider, no pressure. I am going to put the um, cello doll Patreon in the chat um, for you guys to check out if you want. I offer cello lessons at a discount, MP3s, all sorts of goodies. Ha ha ha, I'm a poet. So here is the Patreon. You guys can check it out. And there's a bonus episode coming out on Saturday for the boot camp. So secret episode five for Patreon donors, starting at just $1 a month. That's 12 bucks a year. That's like two or three coffees at a fancy place. So thank you guys all so much. Have a good night, morning, day, wherever you are. And we'll see you soon for more adventures. I got some really exciting stuff planned. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Thank you so much for being here. And Chelly says thank you too. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.